Yes, welcome to the No State Project. We're a couple of minutes late here on the uh, live broadcast on Wednesdays that we do uh, an hour of Anarchy Radio here on, uh, or right here on my U stream, and then it goes to my YouTube channel, which is No State Project. Uh, there on YouTube. It's episode 27. It is July 26, 2017. Glad to be with you here from the Fortified Compound in Mesa, Arizona. Uh, just as I was starting the show, I had things planned. But just as I was starting the show, uh, I went. It, my browser locked up, so I had to restart that. So the things that I had ready to go are not. So I want to thank everybody for their continued uh, support of the big show. And uh, we got a few things that we'll get to. The web, the the, um, the uh, call-in number is – it's tough to do that. Um, the call-in number, of course, is 218-632-9399, 218-632-9399. I got kicked completely off that – when the browser locked up, so but we have uh, so we, we have a, a, an error, a mistake that needs to be corrected on the website from uh, that I did. Uh, we'll get to that. We're going to be talking about how do you write motions to not be ignored. Well, that's going to be a short segment, and we're going to also be addressing again this philosophy issue because it's reared its ugly, time worn head yet again. But for an update, big milestone, I guess, for the show uh, that we had this week. And of course, I'm not getting any audio. Vegeta, what does the uh, scouter uh, say about his power level? It's over 9,000! What, 9,000? There's no way that that's right. right. No State Project on YouTube finally hit 9,000 subs. So we got more than 9,000 there. So a uh, hell, uh, hell of an accomplishment for ma- when you have material that's as unmarketable as this. Not because it's wrong, but because people just don't like it. People aren't interested. People may want to fight and defend themselves against traffic tickets, but they don't want to uh, necessarily get into having to challenge the entire system. Because people are emotionally attached to the system. To realize that the whole thing was a scam from day one, yeah, that that is kind of upsetting to people. Especially like some of the critics that we've got here who have their whole life invested in it. Some who claim to be extremely, extremely wealthy people owe their money and their livelihood, their comfort. They owe it to a criminal organization. And I say it's criminal because I have the evidence. It's not a false claim like the ones that are made against me. Uh, The evidence is they're just men and women. I don't give a damn if you say it's philosophy. Well, it's just philosophy, man. Uh, That's just your opinion. No, it's not. They're just men and women forcing us to pay them. There is no disputing it. If you dispute it, I'll fungal. That's just the way it is. But... The people decided, the people chose. No, they're all forced to pay. Accept the truth. Stop trying to be a, a, you know, an apologist for something that's criminal. They're criminal. And these lawyers, they owe their, their comfort level. They owe their lifestyle to a violent monopoly. Now, it's easy to sit on your gilded throne that was paid for because the market would never pay somebody $500 an hour or even $200 an hour uh, if there wasn't a monopoly. So it's easy to sit on your gilded throne and just hurl insults at people. Oh, yeah, we're Internet lawyers. Hey, no one at the show is pretending to be a lawyer. And just because people engage the legal system doesn't mean they're trying to be a lawyer. So do better with your insults than Internet lawyer. What the hell is that supposed to be? What a stupid, what a stupid thing to say. You're just an Internet lawyer. Yeah. But what I want to do is first get to a correction that I did post as a success. I'm going to leave it as a success because however somebody gets a ticket thrown out, we're going to post it if we have the evidence. So I had initially posted about an appeal success, and I did not have the documentation. And I, a phone call, I don't care about people who say I'm lying. I didn't have the document. If I had had the document and it was clear that it was re- that the 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 ticket with complaint was thrown out because the vendor for the prosecutor for the court did not send the transcript to the appellate division so that they decide just to throw the whole thing out. Uh, 
Why didn't they send it? So, so I, so if I may, I don't, not in the article, I didn't say anything in the article had anything to do with my, with my paperwork. Uh, but maybe I mentioned that in the video and that has to be corrected. The, the, uh, it was not thrown out because of the motion or for the defense. It looks like it was just thrown out because the, the, the prosecution once again did not send a transcript. Now, I know from Judge Preston here in Scottsdale, Arizona, uh, he was so bad about sending files up on, to the appellate branch that he, his office, this the Justice Court, his office was actually investigated by the Justice Department about 15, 18 years ago. It was supposed to be if you lose a file that's supposed to go up on appeal, it's summary removal from office, but they don't give a damn about that. I still would throw out there that he put up a hell of a defense. They never proved that their constitutional laws apply. They never proved jurisdiction, whether it be territorial, personal, or subject matter jurisdiction. They never proved that the laws were violated because they never proved that the laws were applicable in the first place. I'll address the philosophy crap later. Don't worry, this is not going away. I know, I know, I should just ban and block stupid comments like that when it just when people just don't stop, but I don't want to be that guy. So, uh, that's the correction. Doesn't mean I lied. There was no malintent there. I'm going on and I'm correcting it. Uh, but there's still a question. Was it just a harmless error? Did the... Why didn't they send the transcript up? Was it because the defense? or And, and the appeal was not contested. The, it's not like the prosecution filed any opposition to it. See, when you, when you allow the prosecution to argue without evidence, when you deny effective cross-examination, what kind of appeal could you have? So maybe, and again, I'm speculating here, maybe... There was no transcript sent up because it was easier to save face and just let the whole thing go away since it was just the traffic ticket. But we don't know. But I do, I did make the correction. So, uh, but anytime somebody gets something tossed out from one of these uh, uh, criminal organizations, we're still going to post it. And, and I've even posted where I helped somebody with the IRS and getting it tossed out had nothing to do with the challenge of jurisdiction. And I posted that, and I was very upfront about it. So uh, the idea that I'm trying to mislead people is just wrong. Again, if you got your evidence, present it. I didn't have all the documentation, so uh, whatever. Okay, I'm going to have to. Okay, we got, it looks like Texas, but uh, maybe not. We have area code 952. You're live on the No State Project. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Ryan. Ryan? Yep. Ryan, yes. You calling from Texas? I'm not. I'm calling from Minnesota. Minnesota. All right. What do you got for us today? Uh, I have a issue with a stop that happened back in, I believe it was March. And I've been trying to research and figure out the best way of going about uh, fighting it, I guess. That's not sure what it feels like. So I want to stop with uh, my son who was buckled in his car seat. The officer stopped me for a red light violation, kind of a yellow red light sort of deal. Uh, went and checked the car seat and basically said, you know, this car seat doesn't, you know, it doesn't look like he's buckled in quite right. And proceeded to go inside the car and said that he wasn't buckled correctly. I showed him that the seatbelt was, was as tight as it would go around the car seat. And I don't know. You're kidding. But, he, what was his pretext for the stop? Uh, the, the red light violation. Oh, the red light. I'm sorry. Okay. The red light. But, I mean, I was literally, like, right behind him as he went through the light and I went through the light. And it kind of changed red right as I went through it, so. I gotcha. So you got two tickets. No, just a warning for the red light, and he decided to give me a ticket for the improper use of child safety restraint. (sighs) 
wow, did he take pictures to show the court that? No. Oh, so it's it's it, it's just your word against his. He's got no video footage, <coughs> nothing. Uh, there's video footage, but it's blurry to oh. say the least. And there's uh, no audio of the stop as well. Uh, he said the mic was turned off, and I got the I got the DVD of the video, and <laughs> yeah, all you can hear is the electrical noise from the you know the lights and stuff like that in the background. Otherwise, no audio. Wow. Well, basically, it is my word against his. Yeah, the video is too bad. Well, we don't want to get into the merits anyway. Hey, there would be some that would actually uh, suggest to you that to do absolutely nothing because cops just n- routinely don't show up. Cops never show up. So, you know, just, just do nothing and the cop won't show up. And, and then, uh, you know, you can post it online that you're such a great, you know. Anyway, I'm sorry about the sarcasm. I always, no. of course, do it. As uh, I, I challenge the jurisdiction, nothing is relevant until jurisdiction is proven. And yeah. are you familiar with the way we go about doing things? Hold on. Uh, a little bit. I've, I've watched some of the videos and stuff like that, and I've, I have filed a motion and stuff like that. Oh, you already filed a motion? I, yeah, I did. Okay, did you file the, and that is, you filed the discovery request? Is that how you, is that what, what they gave Brady, you? In, Brady discovery and... Um, uh, motion to dismiss. Okay, and so in response to the discovery request, you got the video. Yep, I got the video, and I asked for a copy of the um, officer's police report. I haven't gotten that yet. Okay, so do you know the basis of using the Socratic method, why I use that and why it's been effective so many times on three continents, and why that, that's a better way to go than, uh, at, uh, than to... Um, let's say, raise legal issues? Uh, I, I don't really. I mean, I've, I've looked at it, the what, where, why, when, uh, you know, how, who, I think, I think that's the basis of the reasoning. Well, what we want to do is we want to keep the burden of proof on the, the accuser. So in logic, yeah. the one who makes the claim, even in law, so for those lawyers who say, you can't use regular, regular college logic in court. Where the hell do you get the burden of proof standard from? Basic logic. So yes, you, you yeah. are, you, the, the, uh, the one who accuses bears the burden of proof. And we use that to our, uh, you know, you, you need to use that because if you start making accusations, if you start making affirmative statements, then of course you're taking a burden upon yourself and you're taking the, the spotlight off of the prosecutor where it belongs. For the entire duration of, of a trial, the, the focus should be on the prosecutor because uh, his evidence is what's on trial in a sense, that you're, you're going to see if the evidence they have to support their claims is, you know, not only do they have the evidence, but does it actually support their claims? Okay. Well, how do I know that the judge isn't going to say, well, hey, you know what, we're going to take their word for it over what you say, and sorry, have a nice day, <laughs> you know. Yeah, they can do that. They can do that. Uh, this is why it's so important about cross-examination. Now, when you're going through the pretrial, when you're at a arraignment or a pretrial conference, uh, yes, the judge can and does say things. Uh, we, we've had DeJarnays, DeJarnays, I think his name is, up in New Hampshire. Jurisdiction is a pure issue of law. It requires no evidence to prove it. All the prosecution has to do is prove that you're physically here in New Hampshire. Yeah, they can contradict themselves, after, you know, and all we can do is object and bring that out. Uh, if the judge is going to elite, you know, relieve the prosecution of their burden of proof, then the really only thing we have to do is, that we can do is object to that and then nail them on cross-examination because a denial of cross-examination without waiver would be a constitutional error of the first magnitude and no amount of showing a prejudice would cure it. And that's like Brookhart versus Janus. It's just a, you know, it's the basic principle of, uh, of due process that, about a fair hearing and they, gotta get, they have to allow you to cross-examine a witness. So yeah. the judge is, is going to pull the same crap with the police officer that he did with the, with the, with the, uh, with the prosecutor. He will shamelessly protect the cop. Yeah. 
Shamelessly. But we, we know that in I, advance. I've seen it done. <laughs> right. So that's what he's good. All we can do, if they're going to be, re- if, they're, if they're just scumbags who don't care, and they, they tend to be, the only option you have is to note the objections, preserve the error for appeal, and appeal it. That's all we can okay. do. And you could file a motion ahead of time to change the judge, and then you have the possibility of, of stopping the trial if he denies that. If you have evidence that shows that he is biased to such a degree you can't get a fair trial, then you can bring it up to the higher court. We've done it many times in the state courts, but we've never done it with the federal. I always want to plug that. The feds are so dishonest that they've never accepted jurisdiction of a petition for a writ of mandamus, even though it's black letter law. There's no, it's, it's the only way to remedy a judge that is unbiased, uh, is biased against you. So we do the role playing and whatnot just to hone our skills to, to prep to go into court. So uh, when they do these things, we're not surprised by it. And we know how to respond to them. I mean, the common one is, they, they don't say this in court, they just tend to flood my website with this garbage that we're raising a philosophical issue. So when you're challenging the applicability of the Constitution to you, for some, ha- some reason, when you ask a question about it, you're magically now arguing a philosophical issue, which blows my mind with the stupidity of it, because if someone is making a claim against you in court, it doesn't matter. If it's moral, ethical, medical, if they're making the claim against you, they have to have proof. So you can, so uh, we have to be able to deal with all the, the verbal diarrhea that's going to come out of these lawyers' mouths because they're going to do. Look, you remember that from that, that, that scene in, in uh, Liar, Liar? Your Honor, I object. And why is that, Mr. Reed? Because it's devastating to my case. Overruled. Good call. That's yeah. why these lawyers say the things that they do. They say it's philosophy because they have no evidence to support their claim. If you're making a philosophical claim and it's not permitted in court, I'll talk about this more later, then they shouldn't be making such claims for them, for me or you to question it and have the magic turn my question into an argument. What a st- These are the st- Stupid things that you have to deal with, so you have to learn your objections. So are you familiar with some of the more common objections? I am not. Well, relevance is a huge objection. The question has to be relevant to proving a certain proposition that the prosecution is trying to make. It has to have any tendency to prove that proposition is true. Any tendency. Okay. Does your physical location have any tendency to prove the laws apply to you? I argue it's not. Because they don't have anything else to support that. So relevance is a big one. Objection calls for fact, assumes facts, not in evidence. Uh, if they make a statement such as the law, you violated the law, objection assumes facts, not in evidence. There's no evidence whatsoever to show that just because you are physically in Minnesota that their special rules apply to you. Okay? That's not philosophy. No. No, but, I mean, I get that part, but you're not going to get that in, in court. They may say something to the effect that the prosecution is not required to prove that. And so we need to be able to object appropriately. So objection. Let me see if I understand you correctly here, that tough guy. <laughs> it sounds a little crazy. Are you saying the prosecutor can argue against me without evidence? For that one, he gets a free pass, and they're not going to let us do that. So uh, there's, you know, that's a big objection. Objection, um, you always want to get a clarification from them if necessary so they don't accuse you of taking taking them out of context, which is so the way these these vermin operate. You nail them square between the eyes with the crap flowing out of their mouth. You took me out of context. I didn't say that. Ah, but fungal you did, though. You did, too. Uh, another one that you have to keep in mind is objection leading. Now, when you get in there and the police officer is on the stand and under direct examination, being that he's first being questioned by the prosecutor, the prosecutor may not ask a leading question. Leading questions are only appropriate for 
uh, cross-examination. They're only appropriate for direct examination under certain limited circumstances. So let's say you have a witness who's being a complete scumbag and being what they call hostile. Then you can ask limited uh, leading questions. So I ask everybody, do you know the difference between a leading question and a non-leading question? Uh not exactly. I mean, okay, no I could problem. Probably identify one if you know it was presented in front of me. But. Okay, let me give you this question. After you got to the defendant's house, did you then knock on the door? Is that a leading question or a non-leading question? I would think that'd be a non-leading question. Wrong. That's a leading question. A leading question has the information in the question. Whereas a non-leading question leaves the information open to just the witness. So a non-leading version would be, after you got to the defendant's house, what did you do next? He has to then fill in, oh, I knocked on the door. After you knocked on the door, what happened? That's a non-leading question. A leading question would be, well, after you knocked on the door and the defendant answered, is that when you pulled a gun? So the prosecutor, when he's questioning his witness first, does not get to ask a leading question. So you want to say objection, leading. Now, even though you can have objections right on point, doesn't mean that the judge is going to sustain it. He could be asking a total leading question, and the judge could just basically say, fall goal and, and rule against you. Keep in mind that And this is actually to our benefit of showing how dishonest and unfair the proceedings are. Anytime you've got people who are extremely rigid in their behavior, they're really easy to manipulate. So you know that they've already got you guilty before you walked in the door. That's just the way traffic courts work and taxes. So knowing that they're going to do that, they're going to be sustaining these objections or rejecting these objections. So they're going to deny your objection that... When the police officer is put on the stand, you want to object. This is another big objection. You want to object that the witness is not competent because the prosecution has failed to show any, any evidence showing personal knowledge of the matters they're testifying to, which include that you violated the law, but they had no personal knowledge that the laws apply. Yeah, I know, I know. They don't have to prove that. Yeah, sure, sure. If they can argue the laws apply with no evidence, I can argue that they don't without evidence. So who's right? This is why evidence is needed. So that's another big objection that the judge will probably tell you to go screw yourself, and he's uh, he's going to um, overrule your objection. He's going to put the witness on the stand anyway. So when you start doing your cross-examination, because the judge has ignored your uh, or denied your objection, when you start your cross-examination of the police officer, you're going to ask him for evidence to support his claim that just because you're physically in Minnesota, the laws apply to you. And they're going to object that the witness is incompetent to testify. <laughs> so now you've got two, obje- two of the same basic objections. The judge denied yours and is going to sustain when the prosecutor does it. Yeah, that's what I'm expecting, pretty much. Okay, well, so you're kind of familiar with these criminals and how they operate, so it's just a matter of doing the role-playing and understanding how to respond and object to these when, the, when, they're, uh, when they're doing their evasions and their lies. Yeah. yeah, I agree. I mean, I don't know. It's, it's just been, honestly, it's been really stressful uh, trying to, I mean, I've been staying up half the night trying to research, you know, all kinds of information, you know, stuff I, honestly, I didn't have any idea of before. You shouldn't, there's no reason to be staying up late at night. You learn the Socratic (laughs) method, learn the Socratic method, learn how to keep the burden of proof. And we do this. I have the script. We have the role playing. I, I, we've done it on the show many, many, many times. Uh, we did a little bit here today. I, I can't spend yeah. too much more time to get other callers, but but you need yeah. to do that. That's more important than trying to research, every, you know, all their statutes and codes and whatnot. I, I've had I've helped people get things tossed out in Australia, and I'm not an, an expert, or I don't even have a working knowledge of Australian law. But what I do know is yeah. it follows the same the same uh, fraudulent pattern or the same false premise, in that if you're physically in Australia, their magic rules apply to you, and that's there's no evidence to prove that 
they desperately, and it's the same thing here as it is there. They got to put the cop on the stand to testify you violated the law. But he's got no personal knowledge of that. Now, you can say he doesn't have to prove that. Well, then again, fair play. You know, turnabout. Do you get to put a witness on the stand to testify against the cop and the prosecutor who has no personal knowledge of the matter she's testifying to? You and I don't get to do that. And there is your evidence of a double standard and how unfair it is right from the start. But you shouldn't be getting this stressed out. This is not a situation where you've got a lot on the line. If this is so stressful for you, then you may do a couple There's more. more to it than that, too, I guess. But okay. I'm not going to get into that now. But. All right. Well, I, I would put out for anyone listening, if defending yourself is causing you so much stress, then it's just not for you. It, 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 it's, uh, you know, confrontation is just not... Not everybody is is uh, is going to want it is going to be good and is going to want to do that. So, but if that's not what the case, but get to role playing and doing that, and keep calling the show, and we'll do what we, we need to do to get you prepped. You know, and let me throw this out too because this was a contradiction that kind of that that somebody uh, uh, this week missed. Now, is this a contradictory statement? Jurisdiction is a pure issue of law. It requires absolutely no evidence to prove that it's true or it exists. And that all the prosecution has to do is show that you're physically in Maine or physically in Minnesota to prove that there's jurisdiction. Is that a contradictory statement? Yes. What's the contradiction? The fact that you have to prove prove jurisdiction. Well, the contradiction, but th- there's a specific contradiction. That was said by a scumbag judge up in New Hampshire a couple months ago. Deshard Dans, I think his name is. Let me say it again. Is this contradictory? And if so, why? What is the contradiction? Jurisdiction is a pure issue of law requiring absolutely no evidence to prove it's true. All the prosecution has to do to prove jurisdiction is that you're physically in Minnesota. It says it's a pure issue of law, and shouldn't law be based on fact? Then? Well, a pure issue of law is not based on fact. A pure issue of law would be uh, murder is, uh, def- is in the law the uh, taking of another life with malice aforethought. That is a pure issue of law. If you want to prove that someone committed murder... Now you got to have evidence, because it's a practical issue of law. So what, the, what this scumbag Desjardins did in New Hampshire, and, and these critics do all the time, is if it is in fact a pure issue of law requiring no evidence, then you don't need your physical location to prove that there's jurisdiction, because that's a fact. That's why they say that jurisdiction is a trial issue, because they have to prove your physical location beyond a reasonable doubt on the day in question. It is not a pure issue of law, and anyone who says it is is lying to you, because they'll then contradict themselves and say, they just have, they just have to prove it. Oh, come on. Practical applications of the law are never theoretical. They're opposites. It's just like in science. There's theoretical and then it's practical. The theoretical does not require evidence. But jurisdiction is not a theoretical issue of law. It's a practical issue. You have to have some facts. And so that's, that's another example of showing how contradictory they are. Most of what they say to you is going to be a lie or a contradiction in some way. It's up to you to recognize that. Listen to what they're actually saying. Accept okay. that everything out of their mouth is a lie, okay, and that you're going to challenge yeah. it. You just I've need to. F- that part. <laughs> okay, well, th- then then you're well on your way to being able to effectively defend against these crooks. Okay, get on the do the role bad. play, do the role play in practice, and uh, f- okay. you you welcome to call a show, call the show again. We'll be live again on Saturday. All right. Well, thank you, Mark. I appreciate your time. You are welcome, and good luck. Uh, Ryan in Minnesota. We now have area code 615. You are live on the No State Project. What is your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, Mark. It's Matthew. I'm calling from Nashville, Tennessee. Matthew from Nashville. 
What yes, can we I have to thank you just, just from the outset, I actually used your motion to dismiss uh, against Franklin uh, City Police. And not only did I win the case, but the officer resigned shortly thereafter. So it was a it was a two for one. It was just wonderful. So Wow. <laughs> so oh, it, was, it was brilliant. I, I should have sent it in actually as soon as it happened. I was just I was ecstatic. But um yeah, I got a, uh, a ticket up in Greenville, Illinois, on the way home from a wedding, and uh, it was you know the same bureaucratic crap. And uh, I am going to dig in and, and fight them with everything I have because I just refuse to let them take my money. So, wow. Well, before we get into it, well, did it did it have to do with the defense that you that you know from the demotion to dismiss and the defense that we talk that we we you know talk about every day every time on the show? Yeah, it was. It was the motion to dismiss, and I was I was asking them, you know, if if this is a civil or criminal court, and they couldn't. They said, oh, it's just city traffic court. I said, no, it's either a civil or it's criminal court, and you have to and, and really call them into question with all their. I mean, I, I sent them probably the nastiest request to compel discovery that I could I could think of, and you know, they they gave me calibration records from a different radar gun, like an old model, and. It was it was a joke, and so they found me wow. guilty anyway. Wow! But on appeal, uh, on appeal, I actually ended up subpoenaing. I just uh, sent. I wanted to look at the officer's background, fitness for duty, all this other stuff. Just looked at him, put spotlight directly on him, and that's the, not the first time I've beaten a, a ticket in this city, actually. So it's it's very interesting. But you know these uh, these guys up in up in Greenville, Illinois. And I got pulled over going uh they allegedly eighty three and a seventy, which is ludicrous because I have my you know, I have my cruise control set. And I asked the officer was it radar, that sort of thing, and and I submitted the Brady request as as instructions as I did before, and then uh, you know, the uh, the motion to dismiss and got it denied very quickly. They said denial and uh they said that well deny that they denied my uh my motion to dismiss but they will give me a um, they'll give me discovery up to uh up to um the people versus schmidt which is kind of a, an interesting thing in illinois they say that you you have certain limits on misdemeanor misdemeanor uh on misdemeanor um evidence so i thought it was kind of interesting oh of course because yeah, of course. I mean, it's, it's just I see the I see the, the garbage like just coming down the pipe right now. So what they're trying to do is, I mean, you can't sit there and, and say that you, uh, you 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 caught me at a certain speed without proving to me that your 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 calibration is is everything is is, is up to speed and that sort of thing. And so I, I know what they're going to try to do. They're going to try to deny me deny me the access to that, which. You know, I called the court today and talked to the people, and so well, we can just give you discovery the day of the trial. I'm like, no, you really can't because that's not, you know, it's just. Well, it's I, I will so, say, how do I, how do I, I will say though, Matt, that that's a common thing, especially you know. But if they're considering it civil, like civil traffic in Arizona or an infraction in California, but for a misdemeanor, for a misdemeanor to give you the evidence yeah. right immediately before trial, no, that is just that is a. That is a douche move. Yeah, it is. It's a complete douche move, and it's you know it's one of those things that I won't stand for. It. I'll call it out. I will. I will spend my time. I will. I don't care. I'll drive up there. They got good beer up there. I'll be fine. But it's one of those things that I would. My wife gets so angry. I'd spend two hundred dollars fighting a hundred dollar ticket on principle. I don't care. It's fine. I just am not going to give these jackals my money. Ah, I refuse to. People with principle. So. Yeah, they're a very rare commodity. I will say, and even though it wasn't. It, it wasn't for lack of evidence proving jurisdiction. You still get this. Victory yeah, oh no, it, 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 it's, in, it's insane. It's insane. So I just want to know exactly what I need to do to get it, you know, get it kicked. Well, what, what was everything just denied at the trial level? Was the judge just a piece piece of garbage, just denying everything without explanation? I didn't even see. I didn't even go up there. I sent it in. Said I live in Nashville. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm oh. working. I've got to, you know, I'm feeding my family. I live in, I live in Nashville, Tennessee. But this is in Greenville. It's about four, four and a half hours away. I got gotcha. you. So you, it was basically like a, a trial by declaration. Yeah, I just sent it in because I'm not, there's no way I'm going to waste my time with those people until they, you know, until I, I really have to get in there and and defend in court, which I have no problem doing. I mean. uh you know, uh, I have no problem with confrontation, and as a matter of fact, I think they deserve to be confronted on their garbage. I and, hey, you know, I, I get you. So, yeah. So, I mean, uh, you know, as far as you know, 
looking at the um, at the case, you know, just the speeding and that sort of thing. If they don't give me the discovery and that sort of thing, then I can. I mean, if they find me guilty, I can just appeal to the higher court and say that they violated my due process. Correct. Well, if they, yes, if there's a Brady violation or a discovery violation, they yes, that is reversible. That's denial of a fair trial. Uh, but you've already had it thrown out, right? Oh no, this is this is a new one. This is the one in Illinois that I, I have yet to. Uh, I have yet, yet just submitted the uh, the request and that sort of thing. This oh, is, I, 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 I don't get tickets often, but yeah, I'm sorry. I guess it wasn't very very clear about it. You no, know, we were coming home from a wedding in June from uh, Illinois, and got pulled over by a. Uh, a, a cop and uh, he gave me a ticket for uh, 83 and a 70. And it was kind of funny how he said, Oh, well, you know, I'll, I'll just drop the speed and that sort of thing. It's like, well, if you're just dropping the speed, then how, how, how sure are you that, you know, it just, it's, it's such garbage. And so I sent in the, uh, the request to uh, the, uh, the Brady request and the, uh, the motion to dismiss. And of course it was denied, but the judge said, Oh, you can, you can have discovery you know, as per, People versus Schmidt, which you know limits this limits pretrial discovery in uh, cases where you cannot go to the penitentiary. Apparently, it's just stupid. Yeah. Because you know what? That's that's a foundational aspect of their argument is that I was speeding, so they have this uh, they have their radar guns and that sort of thing. Well, you have to hold them accountable for that stuff. You know, like you said, hold them accountable for every bit of information. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, you have. Uh, I would refile the motion to dismiss. Uh, I will a motion to reconsider and point out that hey, douchebag, uh, this is based on a lack of evidence. Okay. Yeah. Nothing in the record shows the evidence that's missing. So the only thing you could possibly be doing here, Mr. Judge, is covering for the prosecution or making the outlandish claim that he does not have to provide such evidence, and that is textbook prosecutorial misconduct. Right. Yeah. So I would and file that. I would put that in a motion, motion to reconsider and point out, and this is for everyone listening, the motion to dismiss is based on a lack of evidence. To overcome that, there's only two ways to really do that. You And we have a, the Wisconsin motion that was granted, which is great in regards to this. One, you have to provide and cite the actual evidence that we say is missing, or you have to show that the prosecutor is not required to have evidence of jurisdiction and an element of the crime. Right, and so you're supposed to be presumed completely innocent of all elements of the crime. So jurisdiction, they're just assuming that you are, you know, that they have jurisdiction over you, like you said. Which yeah. Is complete crap. Complete crap. So And irrefutably yeah, so. so. I want to point that out. They consider that that claim from the prosecutor that the court has jurisdiction is absolutely irrefutable, which you can't defend against. Right, and here's why I know it's such garbage as well, is, you know, they said that they can just hand me the, the discovery the day of trial and that sort of thing. Well, oh, here's the thing. I submitted my request, and they have apparently 14 days to comply in the state of Illinois. But my trial date is is set just a few days. You know, it's, it's set on the 31st, so they wow. technically have another week. So it's just it's crap. It's just, well, I, I think that they would have to either reset it or the, the prosecutor is responsible to give it to you right before the trial. So I think the trial right. date is what's more important here. I want to ask you this, because I've done this many times, and I've, I've done it with other people. We've walked straight up to the cop. Before the trial, I remember the last time we did it with Mike in Scottsdale, and asked the police officer, do you have the requested discovery? And this jackass says, I'm going to let the judge handle that. I'm like, oh boy. You're going to let the judge give us your discovery? So this Pierre Pan, what, what a crook. He yep. knows that there's a discovery violation on the, right in front of him. Just lets it go. Ah, whatever. I'm going to let the... Yeah. And that's another thing, too. Why is he saying, I'm going to let the judge handle that? He's that comfortable in his relationship with the judge that he's going to say something that any judge sticking to the rules would chew him out? Possibly have him oh, yeah. sanctioned? Like, if I was a judge, and, and or if there was any honest judge, I'd be like, wait a minute. Come up here, Mr. Police Officer. You actually said to this to, to the defendant that I would take care of your discovery for you? Did you just become a cop before walking in the door? What is wrong with right. you? Are you... A... Right. So, right. 
But they're thick as thieves, though. You know, it's uh, funny. Uh, yeah. The, the one trial here in Tennessee that I that I won, you know, it's funny because the 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 judge said, "Oh, you know, how's the baby doing?" And so they're just they're they're big buds. So I was like, sure, ridiculous. So, so let me ask luck. you this though. Yeah. Even if they're given to just five minutes before the the scheduled trial time, is it mm-hmm. even remotely possible for them to provide evidence proving that their constitution applies to you just because you were physically in Illinois? No, not at all. Is there any evidence no. whatsoever that the cop can show that he has personal knowledge that the laws apply to you just because you're physically in Illinois? No, there's not, and I, I love the question that you ask. Say, then, uh, what are the what are the elements to file a valid complaint? What are the what are the elements? Describe. Well, how many? Then, the, 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 you, yeah, you, how many? You you don't yeah. need to get into that. You're not going to have the time. You should really use the other two questions that I've been talking about on the show. Which is uh, prove that your your laws apply. Well, 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 first you have to get them to confirm their position. You have to get them to restate their prior testimony because you know that that that, that scumbag, w- you know, without the robe on, is going to be yelling objection, calls for legal conclusion. So okay. you got to set your relevance and ask him: Did you determine on your own that just because you saw me physically in Illinois that your laws applied to me and that you had jurisdiction and probable cause to stop me? Once he says yes, because they will. Now you got him. Sure. Now you ask him, do you have any evidence whatsoever? And be cautious in how you respond because we already know that we already know that you didn't provide the discovery. But did you ha- do you have yes or no? Do you have any evidence, any relevant facts proving that just because, you know, proving your claim that just because I'm physically in Illinois, your your magic laws apply to me. That's when they start doing right. their objection. The other stuff is great, but we don't have the time generally to get into that. It's better to just hit them square sure. between the eyes. Sure. Well, that sounds good to me. I mean, save, me save me time and trouble. For sure. sure. So, and so that'll take care of it, huh? Pretty much. I mean, of course, if not, if they, if they find me guilty anyway, then I'm just going to appeal it to the yeah. court. Yeah. I'll go up to the next, you know, next court. So, yeah. yeah. No one is saying that if you... Show the contradictions. Show, have absolute, you know, uh, direct evidence proving that it's unfair. That they're going to do the right thing. They're not. They're criminals. They don't always do that. They do it a lot more often than not. Thank goodness. But you have to count on them not doing it. And so, sure. yeah, your appeal issue is, hey, they denied effective cross examination, and that's why you get this crap like I did in a video with Patricia Starr, where they say it's not a proper question. Because it calls for a legal conclusion. Well, you know what? They're okay with doing legal conclusions to get your butt in there. Right. Right. Exactly. And that, and again, like I've mentioned before, the question is, do you have any evidence to support the legal conclusion you just made, jackass? You just He just <laughs> testified to that. He's already testified on direct examination that, he, that you violated the law and he had probable cause to stop you. Those are legal conclusions. Those are legal opinions. Which he is not fit to give, clearly. Well, we're saying that, and now the prosecutor is saying it, because when you ask him for the evidence to support his claim of probable cause, he didn't have any. Yeah, because he calls for, calls for legal conclusion. Is that, is that his objection? Well, no, yes, that's his objection. And again, the objection is off point. Right there. Yeah, the objection is off point because you're asking for the facts. Well, he can only testify to the facts and what happened at the stop. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. He testified just now that at the stop, well, before the stop, he determined probable cause. That's a legal conclusion. It's not a statement of fact. Right. So the evidence so that that really- yeah, so the evidence that that was based on is a relevant question because if it wasn't based on evidence, if it was just pure speculation, you got to throw out the finding of probable cause. And now his own attorney is saying he's not even qualified that you violated to say you violated the law. Yeah, it's going work for me then, huh? Yeah. Beautiful. I just want to make sure I have it, I have it in proper order, that I deliver these uh, these things in proper order. You know, And I guess I do need to jump in and, and do some role-playing. I haven't role-played uh, in the forum yet, but I would really like to do that. Well, do, well it's a no-stay no project Skype chat. Okay. The forum is Perfect. just text, so you're not doing anything in real time. So you want to get on the – I mean, you can go there and ask questions. It's fine. But when you're doing it in real time and doing the role playing, you definitely want to have the uh, the No State Project Skype chat. 
Sure, no problem. I can I can definitely do that. But yeah, I just I think I've got a good shot with this one, and like I said, let's continue to fight it if uh, if need be. But you know, I just see how crooked it is already. I mean, it's just I, I'm no stranger to seeing uh, how absolutely ridiculous and crooked the system is. So I just I really yeah. appreciate all the work you're doing to expose it. It's a, it's a beautiful thing, and I'm very very happy that uh, that there are other people like me out there who I don't think I'm crazy for fighting traffic tickets. No, we're not crazy for fighting tax cases and, and uh, drug cases either. So, I, hey, I appreciate right. the call. And, and, hey, let us know what happens. You know, you can still call in again on Saturday, and uh, that's because it's not. I will. And, uh, yeah, so if you have any other questions or concerns, we can address that and make sure that for the 31st you can go there and really give them hell. Beautiful, man, Mark. I really appreciate it. Thanks so much for taking my call. You're welcome, and congrats on having that other one tossed out. Appreciate it. Hope uh, we hear back soon. Definitely let us know on the 31st what happened, so don't keep us uh, don't keep us up in the air. I do want to get to this whole philosophy thing again, so maybe I'll have a bonus segment. Maybe I'll, I won't make it part of the actual show. I'll do a separate video of that that I can post also on the forum because I'm just so tired of this philosophy thing. They're all laughing at you because they know what you're doing. They just don't want to embarrass you. They don't want to hurt your feelings and say that you're arguing philosophy. A question is not an argument. Gosh, my gosh, some people are thick. Yeah, we're good to go. Jay in Texas. Hey, hey. Uh, it's been a while. It has. Been trying to take in, been trying to take in some info. And, uh, you know, my, mine has not been... Uh, I've brought this up a couple of times. It, it, mine is not so much about the traffic stuff. I'm, I'm really more interested in your approach to property tax. Right. And something, something just, I don't know, you had these epiphanies, and uh, it came to light that um, when you file a deed with the state, you have basically signed on for their services. Does that sound about right? Well, that's the, an allegation that they make, and they, that they're not taking into account that it's not done voluntarily. Right. It's done through coercion and misinformation. Uh, it's just kind of what you know the guy next door did, and so that's what you do, and well, the thing yeah, is, it's done through the mortgage company, and the, and the mortgage company is required by law to make sure that that is recorded. Right. So now, hold on. Okay, to remove to remove that, I own my house free and clear. I have no mortgage, but nice. I do. I do relate to what you're talking about. That you know, that's kind of that catch twenty two with the mortgage company, but not in my case. But I did freely and. Well, without you know proper knowledge, voluntarily uh, file the deed with the tax assessor, and in doing so, I voluntarily agreed to the terms, which was the services they provided, schools, hospital, the things of that nature. Yes. Well, if you're doing it. Sense? Well, it, it, the thing is, those services are still provided on a involuntary basis, so they're going to still go to collect the tax. See, that, that's the thing it comes down to. The deed is completely irrelevant, as we know from Adam Kokesh. We know the deed is absolutely irrelevant because they're still going to assert jurisdiction. They're still going to assert that you have to pay property taxes, whether you file the deed with them or not. They still make the same assertion. So it's like having a driver's license. Whether you did it on the coercion or whether you did it uh, uh, because you didn't have all the evidence, you didn't have all the facts, it wasn't an informed choice, it ultimately doesn't matter because they're still going to assert their jurisdiction without it. Their jurisdiction is not based on you filing that. that. In fact, you. this is something that I suggest you do. Call them and ask them, if my property is not listed, if my deed is not recorded with the county, will you still tax it? They'll tell you, of course we will. And what what is their uh, – I, I know the difference between legal and lawful, so I'm going to use the word lawful. What is their lawful authority? Well, I don't make a distinction between the two because you're talking about the same criminal enterprise. So whether it's legal or lawful, it's still criminal. Uh, 
they, they, in their eyes, that they have the legal or lawful right to force you to pay a certain amount of money based on the value, the perceived value of your property every single year. They, have a, they think they have a moral, legal, and, and, and constitutional, whatever you want to say, right, to do that. That's their, because it's physically in what they call their county. That's their position. If you're physically here, our rules apply. We have jurisdiction to require you to pass. And so, therefore, we're going to go back to the Socratic method, which is show me the evidence that because I am physically located in this area, this landmass, that I that those those statutes or rules or laws apply to me. Yeah, I, right. Or let's say, it, just say, show me the evidence that proves that just because I'm physically in this part of Texas, that this written instrument called the Constitution applies to me and creates obligations and gives you jurisdiction to require me to do certain things. So we're just taking their claim that if you're physically in Texas, our magic rules apply, and we want to just ask them what evidence, if any, do you rely on to prove that that's true? Okay. Now, when you understand that when you use the word Texas, uh, that is, uh, it takes on different meanings in the Texas Constitution, in the state or within uh, or um, uh, the boundaries of, and it becomes yeah. less geographical and more political. That's why and if you listen so, to what I said, but you listen, that's why I phrase it the way I did. I said Physically in okay. Texas. And so I'm framing the question that way on purpose. I don't want, because what, so they'll say, well, if you're, fi- if you're in the state of Texas, I, 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 no, you're not answering the question. Physically. Gotcha. So right. we use, whenever we can, we use lay terms and strip out all that political nonsense. Okay. Okay. So if they want to say state, uh, you want to ask them. And this goes right to that straw man that that, that, that that attorney keeps throwing up. I have never, never suggested that anyone goes into court and, and challenge jurisdiction based on there not being a state and that there has to be, there has to be proof of obligation, uh, reciprocal obligations of allegiance and protection. Never. Never suggested that. I'll do that in another video, okay. though. What I'm saying is, right. strip out all the political language, but if they say, but you're physically within a state, objection. Say, Excuse me, I didn't say state. What are you trying to convey to me when you use the word state? Are you, do you mean lit- literally the ground? Because if that's what you mean, could you just not confuse the issue here and just say S- Texas and, or physical and not throw in anything political and to kind of muddy the waters here? You have to, when we're asking leading questions, we're directing where the conversation is going. We are in control of what they can, should and should not be saying. I don't want to hear about the state. Just because, so it gets, I don't need to get in. I don't want to get into a conversation with them. Look, if I am within the physical boundaries of the Catholic diocese, does that put me in the church? Well, no, then what in the world makes you think that just because you drew lines on a map and said it's the state that I'm now a part of the state? Go sell crazy somewhere else. So we don't we ask these leading questions in a particular way so we don't have to get dragged into a discussion about their political bodies, their their their, their body politics, which don't exist anyway. Okay. And, that, uh, that sounds good. Let you pick at it. Okay. Right. Sounds good. Thanks for the call. All right. Thanks, Mark. No Bye. problem. Bye. All right. Uh, don't have much time. Uh, at least when I do a, a video about this uh, philosophy crap, I can take these stupid headphones off. Uh, we have uh, area code 925. You're live on the No State Project. Where? What's your name? Where are you calling from? Todd from Livermore, right outside of San Francisco. San Francisco. What do you got for us today? Hey, just a quick couple things. I know your time's limited. First of all, I ordered your no. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, two books. Uh, first one, Legal Land. Just got it Monday. About halfway through with it. Thank you very much for putting that out. I know I'm a little late reading it. 
Um, you're putting out information that I've known my whole life. I'm 50. Um, you put into a way that is just easy to read, logical, makes way too much sense for people. So I really appreciate that. Thank you much. Um, and I actually ordered your other book, too, Government Died, and I'm All excited right. to get into that book. So I just wanted to let you know that. Um, hey, I happened to get a parking ticket in San Francisco, and so it was for an expired meter. So only question I have is this is my employer's truck. It's registered under them. Would that make a difference um, going in and try to challenge this? Well, did they give the ticket to your name, or did they do it against the vehicle? Which it's probably against, against the vehicle. vehicle. Yeah, yes. it's if it's against the vehicle, yeah, you're you kind of screwed because the company's probably going to just want to fight it and not want you to, you know. They, and then they got an issue of whether you can uh, fight it because you're not the registered owner. Maybe you know they'd only accept some some member of the bar. And I don't want to make any waves with my employer. I've got five years to retire. So. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Um, I appreciate that. Thank you. And just two other things, listening to you. And, hey, I just found you about six months ago, and, and gratefully so, you and some others. I keep migrating back to you because I think your information is spot on, at least in my opinion. Um, uh, this Jackalope Festival, I just went online, just found out about it. starts, I guess, Monday through next Sunday. Yeah, in fact, I just wrote it down that I forgot to mention at the top of the show because of all the problems. Well, I'm glad it could be helpful. <laughs> is that a one uh, one time a year event, or is that done multiple times a year? It's done once a year. It's always uh, at this time of the year. So I'm working. I want to be able to do something in the uh, in January or so um, when Phoenix it, is just it, beautiful and do something right here in the valley. But we've not been able to get anything uh, really even planned yet. I got a motorhome. We'll travel. I just learned about it late, so I'm unable to make it, but I'm very interested in anything else that comes around. Two last things, Mark, I'll let you go. Thank you so much. Is um, Do you ever get to California um, to do any sort of lectures, seminars, classes, events, uh, special appearances? Uh, I'm in, I just got back from California yesterday. I'm in California twice a month. Um uh, but as far as doing that, yeah, I've done them before. I've done them in, I've done uh, workshops in San Diego. I've done them in LA. Um, was I up in Northern California? I may have done something up. I did in Oakland. Wow. How could I? Well, uh, uh, it was near Oakland. I can't remember the, the exact location. San Mateo. Does that sound right? San Mateo is right about a half hour down the peninsula, across, uh, down from the airport. That may have been. Uh, so I'll just, I guess, fall. I'm sorry. That may have been where I did it. I, I don't remember exactly, but that was that's going back a while. So, uh, okay. And I did one in Fresno. <laughs> okay. So if you have anything, I'm sure you'll post it. Just kind of follow your uh, um, uh, website, and then if anything comes up, uh, you put it there, I would think, right? Yeah, as far as doing workshops and stuff like that, the only one time I would do it because of my travel restrictions right now uh, would be in Phoenix or in San, you know, the San Bernardino, Redlands area. Because I, I won't okay. be, uh, I have a limitation on travel right now that I can't travel beyond that. But, uh, but yeah, I'll, I'll let everybody know if I if I have anything planned. I appreciate that, and I'm actually just about to send some cat or just send you a payment uh, for some of the uh, the motions and uh, some of the other stuff that you offer. So I'm gonna get that in the mail Friday. And one last thing, uh, and this is last thing. Any idea of what happened to uh, Joe from Hawaii, uh, Cop Watch? I saw his last posting. He was going into court. He thought he might be thrown in jail for uh, oh. failure to appear. I, I don't know. Uh, you can get on the Skype chat. Maybe somebody can post uh, uh, if there's an update. I, this is the first I've heard. Yeah, his last posting just, just before it was about an hour before he was going to court. He was planning that's a, that's what they're going to do, and I just have not heard hair or hide of them. So, all right, hey, thank you so much. I do appreciate your time. I appreciate your information. I'm going to try to talk to my friends and family and colleagues and pass on this information. I think it's everything. I think it's what we all know, but we've been so indoctrinated and you get so wrapped up in this in the, in not fighting the system that it's, it's difficult it, 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 for people to. It might be their egos too to absorb. 
but again, I do appreciate you and, and everybody else that is, uh, you know, uh, making this stand for the right reasons. So thank you so much. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, thanks for the call, Todd. Uh, uh, we are pretty much out of time. I will do a separate video. Uh, I don't really want to do a separate video, but let me see what time I, uh, let me just take a few minutes here. Um, you know, I, I, well, actually, uh, let me do a separate video for that. I'll do a separate segment. Uh, but remember, like uh, Tom was saying, Jackalope is starting on next m- Monday, the 31st, and runs to August 6th. So you can check that out. Um, I'll be there with Calvin. Should have a lot of fun. It's a beautiful area, absolutely gorgeous. Again, it's northeast of Phoenix. It is not 115 degrees. It, n- it probably never gets above 85. So uh, it's definitely a great get-together, a lot of anarchists, uh, a lot of no-state ty- type of people, people who understand that there's right and wrong and I'm about fungal with legal and illegal, uh, that we live our lives by the principles of right and wrong, not by legal or illegal, or at the whims of some uh, maniacs with robes on. That just because a judge says it doesn't mean it's true. That these people frothing at the mouth just love it. every word that comes out of you know. Oh, Fungo cares. If it's not consistent with principles of right and wrong and logic and reason, there's no evidence. It doesn't matter how how well they write it. Things are not true just because you say they're true. And you can say that something's philosophical doesn't, doesn't automatically or magically relieve you of your burden of proof. It's such a stupid thing. You're arguing philosophy. No, a question is not an argument. When you ask somebody for evidence to support their claim, that doesn't magically mean that you are asking a philosophical or, or making a philosophical argument. Gosh, that is the dumbest thing. But this has been episode 27 of the No State Project live from the Fortified Compound. It's uh, for July 26th, 2017. I want to thank everybody again for the support of the show. And we're finally over 9,000 on uh, the No State Project Skype. Uh, no, nice No State Project uh, YouTube channel. Uh, so I appreciate that. Uh, We will be live on Saturday, and so till next time, salud.